Okay. Awesome. All right. We are live. Uh, thank you, Grid, for tuning in yet another week in a row. Uh, we, are, we are at officially over three months of doing our Builder Series, and I'm really excited for this week as well because we're going to be talking about HVAC, plumbing, and electrical rough-ins. So if you have any questions about that, which many of you do, um, please, I think you're going to really enjoy this video. So please do uh, comment also while we're talking with any questions for Raj. Again, I'm Danielle Pileski-Brown. I'm an investor agent uh, here in the DMV area. Uh, I focus on both investing in properties as well as working with investors who are always looking for different projects. And we have Raj Tamang, uh, our engineer and builder expert who I like to ask lots of questions of and get shocked by every week. So, <laughs> okay. uh, yeah. so today, okay, so let's start with uh, what do you want to start with first, the uh, HVAC, plumbing, or electrical? Um, I think we can probably start with uh, it's back. HVAC. So this is what, you know, after a framing is done, let's say you complete all your floor system, walls, um, trusses, everything installed, right? Then you have a wall bracing panels, which is sitting from outside, roof decking, plywood, subfloor, everything is now installed. That next step is going with the roughing uh, for mechanical, which is electrical, plumbing, and gas, um, mm -hmm. and SBAC. So the rule of thumb is you start with SBAC, okay, dock work. Those are yeah. the big items. Uh, once they're installed, then electrical and plumbing guys will come in and start doing their thing. Because if you have electrical and plumbing done, and the dock work has a certain limitation because of the size. This could be big size, right? If it's 16 by 16, 16 by 24, depends yeah. how big the house are. So first, um, and if you don't install those first and you install electrical and plumbing, and if it is on the way, then, you know, redoing those electrical plumbing could be costly. So the way you have, it, it's it's proper coordination, right? That's part of part of the process is do it as, as bad. HVAC um, goes yeah. first. Okay. Yeah. I wouldn't um, have thought that necessarily, but that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, it does, right? So, you know, it's, uh, I learned a lot. So that, that was, you know, I, I was thinking, hey, you could do probably together, but um, electrical and plumbing, you can do it together. You know, mm -hmm. guys, they can work as long as they don't hit each other. They can work on the first floor. Someone is working second floor, but it's bad. You have to give them all free time because, you know, it's, it's a little bit tricky. And also you have to remember as back because of the side, you might have to have some bulkhead. Um, mm. So, but the bulkhead is not always desirable. So you have to be careful about locating the duct work on the ceiling. Yeah. Um, I know most people some, don't like the look of bulkhead because it, it interrupts that line, you know, yeah. that, that street, that clean line of a, a room with all the same height ceilings. Exactly, ceiling, yeah, exactly. All of a sudden you have a big flat ceiling and the corner or somewhere you have this bulkhead which you don't like it, right? It is. Um, but, and, and for that, of course, all these three traits or four traits, electrical gas, um, you know, that's bad. You have to get a permit from the county, which is a trade permits. So you have a billing permit, then you have to get a trade permit, which is all this uh, trade uh, contractor has to get their one permit. Okay. Uh, when they submit a SBAC contractor, SBAC contractor, when they pull a permit, they have to submit these calculations of of um, of the air calculation actually, because depending on the size of the house and how many doors and windows they have. If you have a big windows and doors, that means you have probably more loss of energy from outside, inside to outside during winter and summer, right? Because mm -hmm. in the winter time you are running heater in the house. In summertime, you're running AC. Yeah. So if your house is not properly sealed, and if you're running those uh, equipment, then there's energy loss through the exterior wall, typically. Um, mm. So, you know, if it is properly insulated, probably doors and windows are places where you see more losses. Um, that's why doors and windows, especially windows, they have like a double hung, not double hung, double pan, single pan, we don't even use it anymore. But yeah, you know, I haven't seen a, a single new window that's had a single pane ever. <laughs> exactly. I really think about it. <laughs> yeah. So, but in old construction, you see a lot, right? You go to DC, Arlington, old house, you see single pane all the time. 
but now there is a basic to you know a double pan and and triple pan even um, awesome. You know, I have I have uh, built some houses with a triple pan, but one of the things I can share with you guys because since it's it's kind of connected um, is that I've been talking with a lot of those window uh, suppliers, and they're saying that triple pan is not worth it in our area. This is why, because in our area we don't feel like a cold like up in Canada, you know. Yeah, um, no, not at all. Or even like we New don't. York or exactly, not even yeah. New York. In the summertime, we don't feel like you know Texas or you know, Phoenix or Arizona or Florida. So we're very moderate. You know, you we see all four seasons throughout the year. Yeah. Um, so on the locations like this, they say it's just useless having three pan. Hmm. And you know, so the upgrade's I, I, just not worth. It's not really it's not worth. As you are not really as you would think. It would be exactly you are not really saving money with energy saving going three pan um hmm. but you it's never know. know people sometimes what's that say again that's good to know yeah yeah because when i knew it yeah i was thinking you know three pan means more energy saving let's go you know if you have money you invest in another ten thousand twenty but from double pan to single pan, three pan it could be almost double the cost wow i didn't yeah. realize it was quite that much wow okay yeah. So and windows already are not cheap uh, to begin not, with. Exactly. <laughs> then when double to triple, yeah, uh, yeah, that's quite a lot. So like, unless you're in, unless you would be living in that house for so long, like 10, 20 years, where the energy savings caught up. But even at, once you get to twenty years, you almost, most people have to replace their windows around twenty years, yeah. right? Yeah, you do. Yeah, that's recommended. So you're really uh, never getting the energy efficiency. And like, you're not going to own those windows long enough to get enough energy efficiency where you've actually saved the money in mm -hmm. this climate. So it'd be very specific. Like if you're in Texas or Arizona, that's probably a different, totally different ball game or Maine or yeah. I don't know, Minnesota, somewhere where it gets so cold that their football stadium collapses in. Like we don't have that kind <laughs> of weather. So here, yeah. double play is good. Yeah, exactly. It's not worth it. I mean, this is a deal. And we're talking here mostly agents and some of the investors, real estate investors, spec homes. Um, but when you sometimes talk to a custom home um, builder, as a custom home builder for some clients, yeah, you know, we don't do too many homes, but there's some of the builders who do very specific custom home for a client that would be highly upgraded. Um, we do one or two a year. People have money. Some people, unfortunately or fortunately, I don't know how to say it. You know, the rich people, they are looking for a reason to spend money. You know, yeah. People think about it. You have a two or four people living in the house, and you have like a thirty, forty thousand square foot house. What do we say? That's a waste of money, right? Yeah. But you see these big houses all the time, right? So, and they're like, you know, I had one client, they wanted, they wanted us to build um, this house in McLean bulletproof. And I've said, um, yeah. So he said, let's put all bulletproof doors and windows. And I was like, okay, <laughs> um, we, we can do probably bulletproof doors and windows, but um, what happened to walls? It's a start wall. Somebody, <laughs> somebody will shoot through the wall. It will just come through the drywall and plywood, right? Yeah. I mean, how would you, I'm sure it can be done because there are places like the white house that are bulletproof, bomb proof, whatever. What did that person do for a living that they're like, you know what we need? Bulletproof house. Yeah. Why? <laughs> like, you know, what? We, we, this is a, this is a fun, we digress. I think it's okay too, but you know, but my point is the, the, sometimes I feel like being too rich it's not a good thing. This guy is so super rich. He won. Um, he's he's an international business person, so he's traveling all over the world. Yeah. Um, then, but you know, in terms of security, in the in especially in other country like Africa, this particular guy, he is. Uh, I think he is like he wants. I don't know a couple of diamond, Corey. I I don't know. So he ah. he he been used to living in Saudi Arabia or living in uh, South Africa where the rich people, they have like, uh, you know, you have to like 10, 15, 20 bodyguard, bodyguard or something you know, for protection. So he's so used to with- with uh, around him. Huh? <laughs> Say again? 
He's not used to McLean being kind no, of No, he's not. <laughs> no, you look at it. This is so funny. As I say, this is, I just want to share this guy, and they have two kids, and he's just here, you know, occasionally only because he thought this, you know, America has a good opportunity for kids to, to go and learn. Um, sure. And he, he's looking around. Even if he's walking around, he goes with like four or five bodyguards anyway because he's not used to, so he does. Then he sees yeah. kids are playing around outside in the ground. He's like yeah. saying, why kids are playing ground outside? Is it safe? I was like, dude, what are you talking about? This is what we do. You know, maybe we, <laughs> we go outside. We move here. <laughs> yeah. And maybe where he's coming from, maybe those kids are not go outside and play freely, especially with yeah. people. They're kidnapped and, you know, ask for some large sum of money from the parents and things like that. So I was like, feel like, oh my God, I don't want to have this. I want to have a money, but I don't want to have this much of money. So I don't feel secure to enjoy my life and scared, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. But and going back Never. again, yeah, you can do windows and doors, maybe bulletproof. But the problem is you already start wall. What are you going to do? Uh, two by six? Do I bring two by six bulletproof? I, I don't think there's such a thing as two by four, know. two by six bulletproof. But then you can do a different type of material. Maybe you can do concrete wall. You know, yeah. So all which are not cheap concrete. to have a whole house made of concrete, concrete in yeah, the size yeah. that you're talking about. <laughs> That's what I'm saying, Daniel. When people have too much money, they just find a way to expand it anyway. You know, they just sure. add features in the house. I, I just designed two houses for a client in Clifton, and one of my builder friend um, is building in Clifton. There's yeah. underground about two thousand square feet area underground bunker. Um, so okay. he comes from another country where he, um, from another country, is make actually the Mexico City. He's come from there. He's a big businessman, and mm -hmm. their security is is a big deal for these people. So sure. he's so scared that he want us to build that underground bunker with all the concrete, everything. It, it's such that if something happens, he can go down there in a bunker and close everything up. He stay there for a month. All the food, all the supplies are already there. Wow. You know, that's how he's a plan ahead. I was like, that's maybe two months, you know. But there are a lot of know. things. People are really getting into like uh extreme, like a pot being prepared for an apocalypse. Like that's the new thing. Yes. I have some friends that have bought like those freeze-dried meals and stuff. I don't know. Oh God, I don't yeah. know enough about it. Maybe I'm not maybe I should be looking into an apocalypse a little maybe more do, right? <laughs> being prepared. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think I think to me personally, they have too much to worry about. There are a lot of things that are not in control, um, and worrying about that does not really help you. You know, yeah, a lot of things oh, going sure. around us in school and shooting things like that. But just sitting here worrying about does not really help you. It is it is what it is what it is. You know, it's it's just totally is what the it moment is. now. That's why I truly believe it. That's what I tell everybody. Oh, I know. My family, God, come on, it happens, happens. There's nothing you can do. It's not in my control. <laughs> But right now, I'm alive, I'm healthy, I can eat, I'm going to enjoy as much as I can. Tomorrow, Absolutely. who knows? Absolutely, with or without bulletproof walls. <laughs> without, exactly, yeah, I don't need a bulletproof, exactly. I, I, yeah. it's, it It'll is be all good. Good. Well, plus, also, yeah. if you had a whole house made of concrete, honestly, I don't think your, your Wi-Fi would be terrible. Your cell phone service <laughs> yeah. would be terrible. Because <laughs> yeah. most commercial yeah. buildings are built like that, right? They have all this concrete yeah. and glass. Um, but we digress. We've absolutely digressed a bit. So I hope everyone enjoyed our apocalypse conversation. But okay, so HVAC, <laughs> putting in HVAC first. Um, let's talk a little bit about the difference between gas and heat, uh, gas furnaces versus a heat pump. Um, what what are some things? Does that change any ducting, or is that really just the system itself, the HVAC system? Yeah. So. Um... So typically house, even in a townhouse, like three level townhouse, you'll see two zones, one in the basement, one in the attic. Um, so I, that's very common uh, mm -hmm. type of, uh, you know, two zone system, SVAC system in, in our area, um, especially if there's more than three story, two story building, right? So typically in the basement, you have a furnace, heat furnace, um, a heater. Then on the attic, you put a, a heat pump. Right. Yes. The unit in the attic will feed or serve the top floor, which is second floor. The unit or heat pump, heat um, 
um, in the furnace, uh, gas furnace, gas furnace, not heat furnace, gas furnace you install on the basement will serve um, your basement and first floor. Mm -hmm. That's how the ductwork works. So that's why you typically see ductwork on the basement ceiling. Mm -hmm. And that's why you will see bulkhead on the basement ceiling. Now on the first floor, you usually don't see it. On yeah. the ceiling, you don't need it because the your second fall is fitting from the from the attic, which is from the ceiling. So you don't see dark floor because dark floor is actually running in the attic trusses between the trusses, right? Um, now the first floor is fit from the basement with the your floor um, also floor vents are coming from the flat from the floor. So there's nothing coming from the ceiling on the first floor. Mm -hmm. It's coming from the first floor floor, right? So which is coming from the basement. So you'll see mostly doctor up on the basement. So at least the doctor, you know, basement is not as critical as a as first floor. That's a good news. But again, you know, the basement, a lot of people they use for you know for recreation purpose in the basement. Like yeah. you know, the gathering, you know, you have a wet bar, you have a media room, uh, warm theater, you have a gym, all kind of things. So you have to be very strategic about locating the dock work. So usually what I do is my guys that once I they prepare it, we go to the side, we have a meeting, come up with a game plan, which way we're going to run the dock work. So that at the same time, when I lay out the room and the spaces, I lay, the, I lay out the accordingly so that it doesn't look too bad. You know? Awesome. Um, yeah. That's, so, that's part of the process. Yeah. So with the, uh, the HVAC itself, the HVAC system, being in more of a basement or a main floor, what about, uh, would the same thing then go for something like a hot water heater, a tank hot water heater, not a tankless? Like, is that typically always on the lowest floor of the building as well? Since yes, we're talking about yes. plumbing and all that stuff? No, typically people put it in basement because your utility room is typically in the basement. Yeah. So when you say utility room, you have a water heater, um, you could have a you know a gas furnace, all that in the basement. Um, because if you want to put it in the first floor, then you need to provide a room for the heater, right? Um, mm -hmm. For the uh, water heater. Um, but one of the things is that even if you installed water heater in the basement, the water pressure can go all throughout the house anyway. But yeah. this is what happened. If the house is too big sometimes, if you install water heater in one corner going to the other side of the house, it may take time. So sometimes you turn on your, uh, you know, sour and it takes like a minute or two minutes to get the, you know, hot water. Um, yeah. That I have that actually in house. my house where it takes a minute or so because I have a tankless hot water heater. Yeah. But it's on the other side of my house. <laughs> That's different story. Exactly. But tankless is, it, it takes a little bit of time to, to heat up. Yeah. 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 Um, so there's two ways of doing it. Um, even with, with the big house. Um, you can actually install, I don't know what to call the, their terminology, but there is a, some kind of pressure or a, a smaller tool you can install on the pipe system. So mm -hmm. it flows quickly. Um, oh. But typically people don't do it. If it is big house, we do like 50,000 square foot homes, we do it. Maybe you have like two, three water heaters anyway. Um, but typically water heaters are gas, mm -hmm. right? Because it's more, uh, that's more efficient. It, it can heat up quickly. And even the gas, before I forget, um, usually, you know, your, your natural gas from Washington gas, which is this area, Washington gas, now they have monopoly, they can do whatever they want to do it. I don't want to talk about too much. I don't want this. I don't want them to get angry with me because I have several projects going with them, but <laughs> they are not one of those uh, people that people like, <laughs> you know, any builders mm -hmm. or homeowners. Um, but, you know, we have to deal with them getting a getting a connection sometimes it may take weeks and days months yeah um but you know it is what it is but like i said when you get this connection gas connection from from um from washington gas there's a two two psi there's called two psi or seven centimeter column water column so what that means is that that the gas pressure coming from the main line mm -hmm. so typically in the house you can do uh, either two psi or seven um, centimeter or inch uh, water column. But the difference in all the commercial construction, I have not seen anything seven inch, seven inch column, water column, it is all two PSI. Yeah. The residential usually, uh, it's smaller house, typically standard house is uh, seven, 
um, 7 inch water column or um, but but the difference is the wiring or the piping. Usually if you do two PSI, you have to do that flex blue or not blue, yellow pipe. Yeah. Okay, that's for two PSI. But if you want to do iron, like cast iron pipe, that's for seven inch. So when you go in the basement, you see that. Yeah, cast that's a big old honking pipe. pipe. It looks that's like Mario that's Brothers are coming in and out of it. Exactly. So that's that's the seven inch uh, water column presser. Got it. Um, but okay. two inch is flex. Right now in my house, it depends. Usually, you know, it's a little bit cheaper with the water column with the cast iron, but. Um, I have probably say 50, 50 percent. Some of the house I've done, you know, two psi. The good thing with two psi, it can be, it, it is better, definitely a higher pressure than seven inch water column. Oh yeah, because it's a little if it's a big, Yeah, if you're a big house, I recommend two psi. Um, and if it is a smaller house, it's okay. You know, well, it's awesome. okay with the seven inch water column. Um, and also, especially if you have too many outlets, you have a, you know, gas. Five places, two or three places. Maybe you have on the back, um, you mm -hmm. have uh, a hookup for um, grill, right? Which we do it nowadays. All the spec home, uh, custom home we do, we have a hookup on the back, so they don't have to buy you know propane tank from outside. Yeah, oh for you sure. Connect to the main line directly. Things like that, I recommend to your PSI. But again, it's like you know, it, it's it's both. It depends, um, because whatever you decide, um, you have to coordinate with the plumber and let. Western gas, no, because that's how they set up their meter. Got it. Um, Got it. That's okay. it. But you know, overall, we've tackled HVAC and we've tackled plumbing. Yeah. Uh, so we, uh, what about electrical? So let's talk about some of the basics uh, there. Like, what what are the main components of electrical that you should know when when focusing on just your rough ends? Like, what what's first? What comes first? You know, the first thing you have to do, for example, um, usually now I would say. Pretty much almost all the homes we build is like 400 amp. Uh, yeah. That, that's the meter, you know? So usually 200 amp, but there's two meters box you will see on side by side. So mm -hmm. it's like 400 amp. So you have a 200, so 200. One is for electrical lights and all kind of things. Other one is for maybe, you know, water heater or for, for appliances and stuff like that. It's separate. Mm -hmm. And if you have a so Tesla. A lot of homes now are having a lot more appliances. Like it's not yeah. just a washer dryer and a dishwasher. Now it's wine fridges, washer dryers, maybe multiple washer dryers, uh, multiple stoves, two ovens. Like there's just a lot more that is that homes are having now. You know. Yes. So 400 amp is very pretty standard for new homes, to be honest with you. And also now it's like even if you don't have a Tesla. You probably need to charge oh, yeah, we talk about that. Light. Yeah, everybody is asking it now. So they want us uh, the plug for, for charger. So we provide that for new house, we do it, we provide that plug anyway. Because yeah. I know that, you know, the buyer will or homeowner are going to ask anyway. So, Someone's going to ask at some point. Yeah, yeah. Someone, exactly. You just have to let, let electricians know. Um, I mean, wiring. If you have, you definitely need a licensed electrician to do all the wiring because you have to pull a permit. Um, and, Absolutely. And, and when you do all the light switches and plugs, you have to, two things you have to do. First of all, you have to comply with the minimum requirements. Um, switches really doesn't matter so much, but the plugs, uh, outlets, the location of the outlets and the spacing is, is minimal required by code. You have to comply with it. But if you need any additional you know, you ask for it, ask, ask the contractor, they can provide it. Uh, some of the things like if you have a TV, if you wanna put a TV um, uh, or connection uh, um, on your bedrooms and you want outlet somewhere on up on the wall, not on the bottom, maybe then you mm -hmm. provide that additional outlet. Um, like I say, we do a lot of structure wiring, which is your cat seats, quips. Um, mm -hmm. You can do all of that too, because this is a perfect timing to do it. And in a lot of people nowadays, they do uh, low voltage wiring for the house is if, if it is, when we build the house, we do at least the basic places, like in a, your master bedroom, maybe your family room, uh, maybe office, media room, you already have those structural wiring. But yeah. if you want more, maybe you want like, you know, security system all house wired. Um, if you want um, your, um, what do you call it? 
the sound system, right? All the wiring, everything done before. This is a perfect timing. Because if you want to do it after you put the drywall on, then it's not a really good idea because you have to cut the drywall. Yeah. It. Yeah. Costs a lot more money to put it in after walls are up than exactly. before. So really, I think what I when I talk to developers a lot about what fancy features, like what smart features should include, should you be including as kind of standard versus yeah. what's kind of extra? Um, it one, I look at the value of the home at the end of this. What are we thinking we're going to sell this for? And really use that as like a comparable, like what things should we be putting in? I think things like nest systems, like basic ones are kind of standard, to, at least to me as an agent or some kind of smart home app driven, like temperature control, I think is kind of standard. Um, and a lot of people now are really enjoying the smart smoke detectors, smoke and carbon mm -hmm. monoxide detectors, which also alert you. So those are becoming maybe not in every single room of the house. Like that's something maybe more close to your kitchen or maybe have one of those in your garage or something like that. Um, but it, we're finding more of those features in coming more than ever. But speaker systems, speaker systems are so hard to retroactively put in. <laughs> they can cost so yeah. much after you put the walls up. Um, but in some price points, they're kind of expected, or at least in certain rooms, things like dining rooms, family rooms, rec rooms, <clears throat> living rooms, those kind of things. Basements. Yeah, I mean, exactly. So like you said before, um, the thermostat, right? The Nest or another brand we use, Ecovi. Ecovi brand is yep, very popular. Those are great. Actually, I like that. I, that's what I have in my house. Good thing yeah. about this is you can control everything from here anywhere. And also every month it gives you a report yes. of the energy saving and all that thing. So from the comparison, all that, it's very good to know. Um, and again, that's, I think I would say one of the things you should invest It's like four or $500, not really big deal. Mm -hmm. um, and some yeah, of the it's things really people not that use. Bad. It's not bad, yeah. Not bad. Some and of the I things that able Daniel to like, install my Nest thermostat in myself because I replaced it, and it gives you such an easy diagram on what to follow and like a video. Luckily, yeah. for the video, but we were able to do it really easily. And our Ring doorbell. Exactly, Ring del doorbell is very popular, um, and also with the Ring now, you have you know Amazon has this Alexa system right in the house. Yeah. So so funny. Other day we we're uh, having on the house, I was not in the house. My my wife and the little one was at home, and something happened, or there was a our I think the smoke detector went on. Whole house mm -hmm. uh, started blinking, you know, ping, 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 right, all crazy. Then Alexa is shouting, "There's a fire in the house!" There's a it's like a really loud. And my daughter, my son is scared. I go, "Why? I don't Aww. see any fire. Why this machine is saying <laughs> there is fire in the house?" Because automatically, when that thing went on went up the lux i think thought hey, this is a fire in the house that's so funny Aww. you know uh, but sometimes <laughs> this technology just makes you uh you know like panic mode yeah <laughs> uh, but these are very necessary tools so now it has been a very necessary part of our life like a dimmers you can use a dimmer it's very easy to install it it's not that mm -hmm. expensive um you know you don't need really dark light so you can control the light um the extent of it uh, things like that there are so many things now you can find it like you, you can't buy anything in a house that it's really <laughs> amazing colorful uh the lighting and the led lights are very i think it's worth it we do all the houses led to be honest with you because oh yeah it's, really it's yeah. totally worth it yeah. yeah like i have a mixture because we're in, in the middle of updating several parts of our house and we didn't change the lights quite yet in our kitchen because we're expecting to do a more major renovation mm -hmm. Two light bulbs went out in our kitchen in this past week, and I'm just like, I forgot what light bulb changing, how <laughs> irritating this little thing could be, because yes. every other part of my house is LED, and I'm never going to have to change those. So this one thing, I was like, dang, I can't wait to get new lights in this kitchen. Yeah. <laughs> the ding, um, and they're such a small size because they're so old that it's hard to find these light bulbs. Like They're like 40 watt. Like It's just so pain, it's a pain in the butt. Um, but yeah, LEDs are great. One, they're eco-friendly and, um, and obviously energy efficient, but they also don't create as much heat and there's no long-term cost. 
because you're not replacing yeah. the bulbs. And I think they actually are brighter and they have a much nicer, um, the, I like the ambient lighting that comes from LED lights rather than uh, exactly. rain, rain. very warm, yeah, warm feeling, you know, you feel a yeah. very warm feeling in the house. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah, for that makes sure. sense. Um, okay. Yeah. All right. This was a well, lot. So if right? you have any questions regarding any of our MEPs that we talked about today, any of the mechanics, electrical, plumbing, uh, and HVAC, please do leave them in the comments. And we will be back next week. Uh, next week, what are we going over next week? Next week, we're going to talk about insulation um, and sealing of your home. So different tools, different um, tactics, what's really worth it. We could talk about spray foam insulation. I know I have questions about that. So I'd really like to ask you about that next week. Um, yeah. And we'll be... We'll be back here discussing all that. Sounds good. Awesome. Thanks so much, Rod. Okay. Talk to everybody right, soon. Thank you, Danielle. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, everyone.